Um, and I'm still here, so very, very good. Um, I'm excited to say that I have survived my first polar vortex, um, you know, and, and negative degree winters and snow and ice and all sorts of stuff, and I'm still here kicking. So, um, so yeah, thank you so much for the warm welcome. I practice integrative medicine, and we're going to go into a little bit of what that means and what that um, pertains, how it pertains to the rest of the medicine, and patients um, that might be seeking this sort of new medicine. Um, I, we're going we're gonna to take a step back and say I did my uh, medical school in Texas, in Amarillo, Texas, and after four years of medical school, you graduate as a doctor, but then you have to do residency in your specific specialty. So I did a three-year residency in family medicine in Amarillo. With that, I'm able to see the entire family, do hospital medicine, emergency medicine, clinic work, etc. But that wasn't enough for me, so I went back for a two-year fellowship in integrative medicine, which we're going to go into a little bit more. But now I'm a, a subspecialty, um, so I still see the entire family, but I really love to do this kind of integrative medicine, which is both my family medicine and this new world of holistic, alternative, you know, evidence-based practices that are out there. Um, does that kind of make sense from the beginning? Okay. Any questions to begin with? Okay, then we're going to just hop on in. So I, um, I'd love to, at the end of this lecture, um, have anyone kind of be able to talk about what is integrative medicine, um, how is it different than the, the different types of medicine that are out there, how does it fit into our current system of insurance-based and um, health systems, as well as how can it benefit your life? If you don't choose to go through integrative medicine um, and you still have a primary care provider, what can I add to your life or to your medical care? Um, instead of being a, a primary, I can definitely consult. And so what um, other things that, that we can definitely talk about. Who has heard of complementary or alternative medicine? Excellent, good. So. Complementary medicine and alternative medicine sometimes gets confusing, right, when you talk about different terms. Complementary medicine are those terms under this, this first slide, or this first side, that you can use together with conventional medicine. A lot of that is like physical therapy, massage therapy, nutrition, diet, Reiki, healing touch, etc. So you can still see your primary care physician and kind of do yoga on the side that complements your, your, um, what your doctor is already having you do. Alternative, on the right side, is sometimes used in place of. So instead of seeing maybe a family medicine physician, you would go and see a chiropractor instead. Or you would see someone that, that concentrates just in traditional Chinese medicine. Or just Ayurvedic medicine, which is the um, traditional national healing practice of India. So alternative is used instead of, and complementary is used with. Does that kind of make sense? Excellent. So where this new term comes in is integrative medicine, which combines everything all into this one fabulous mixing pot that I get to, to roll around in. So it emphasizes a lot of the patient-physician relationship care. I spend a lot of time with my patients, and I want that to be the center of where your treatment goes. The second part is that I get to use my background in family medicine, but also get to use evidence-based alternative practice. So I get to say, you know, your back pain I understand is really hurting you, and on top of physical therapy, I think there is great benefit if you also do acupuncture and you also start taking this herbal or vitamin supplement. And here are the studies that back that up. So my two years of my fellowship in integrative medicine has really been teaching me that. I've been learning a lot with one-on-one -on -one with, with different practitioners out in the US, um, as well as you know all those lovely schools and classes and exams I had to take um, that teach me all of this as well. And so I'm able to sit down with, with a, a patient and say, we're gonna develop this, this specific treatment plan for you, and it's going to have all these different aspects in it. I concentrate on using a lot of natural, less invasive interventions first, 
before the costly, more invasive procedures or, or treatment plans in the future. So it really just adds a lot of more tools to my toolbox. When you come and see me, I'm able to say, hey, listen, you know, it, it, it sounds like you're having um, a little bit of arthritis in your knees. That's, that's definitely causing you pain. And we can do all sorts of different things about it. So I bring out everything onto the table. And I say we can do everything from conventional medicine. Um, and we can definitely take the non-steroidal anti-inflammatories like your ibuprofen, your diclofenac, which has definitely been shown to help. But I also say that, you know what, there's also studies that show that that acupuncture or that energy medicine or this natural herb or supplement has been, also has really good evidence behind it. So I put everything out on the table, and as the patient, you're then able to tell me, hey doc, this is what sounds good to me right here and now. I'm gonna you know, take these three things, and we're gonna start here. I say, great, in three to four weeks, let's talk about how they're doing. We can always change your treatment plan. So there is not one set way of treating one specific disease or condition or syndrome. There is one way to treat the patient and is how the patient and the physician work together to build that treatment plan. Does that kind of make sense? Okay. Um, the last one is it, it definitely engages the mind, body, spirit, and community. All of those are very important when talking about healing and how to get you to your pentacle and to your best wellness, right, state. I don't want to give you a cure. I want you to be overall well. I want you to be healthy. I want you to live the life that you are dreaming and hoping of. Um, and, you, and that not only incorporates, right, how you're feeling and how you're digesting your food, but how are you in your community? Are you involved? How are you? Are you going to church or synagogue or temple? Do you meditate or walk or do yoga? Are you eating healthy? Are you, you know, using um, journaling or mind techniques to, to get to that extra realm? How is your spirituality connected to your health and your wellness? And so we're going to talk about all of those, and those are play a, a vital role into how well you are and how healthy you feel, right? Because it's not just, hey doc, I have heartburn, I want to take a pill. It's, hey doc, I'm, I'm just not feeling good, I'm, I'm kind of lonely and I'm kind of depressed and I'm kind of bad. It's, what can we get you to, to feel less lonely, right? Connecting to those people sitting just right next to us. Or um, getting into a, a wellness group visit or um, starting to, to take those walks outside in nature, right? Simple, simple um, treatments that can actually help you to getting to your journey of wellness. Functional medicine is also something that I practice. Functional medicine is something different, and it's being um, talked about a lot in the media, and so you might have seen it on, on YouTube videos or Facebook if you're involved in that, or anything else like that. Functional medicine focuses on finding the root cause of why you're not feeling well. So instead of um, going and, and trying to give you a medication or a cure, if you will, it is trying to delve a little bit deeper as to why are you feeling this way. Um, a lot of times it's actually inflammation. So in this, uh, in this picture on the right hand side, the cause in the middle, and that's unfortunately a little bit blurry, it says inflammation. And on the spokes, the arrows are going out, and it can, inflammation can definitely cause depression, um, arthritis, diabetes, heart disease, etc. So this one condition can cause multiple different um, conditions in our body, syndromes, diseases, etc. At the same token, on the left-hand side, one condition, such as depression, can have multiple different causes. And that could be your thyroid is kind of out of balance, right? We are not eating as well. We are not getting our, um, our exercise outside. Our diabetes is poorly controlled. Our arthritis is flaring up, et cetera, right? Pain, um, depression, et cetera. So each symptom may have um, definitely many contributing 
factors to an individual's illness. And then the pre precise manifestation of each cause depends on the individual's genes, environments, and lifestyle. So it's not clear cut, right? Each individual patient is each individual patient. And that's why the treatment is individual to you and to us and to, to each person. It is a one-on-one -on -one connection. So where does this all fit into our, our current health system and why does it matter? We're going to talk a little bit um, about this study. And this is from all of the, the next couple of slides and these uh, graphs and charts are from an interview um, survey that they did in 2007. So it's a little old, right? It's a little dated. But unfortunately, this is the most recent data that we have. When we're looking at our total healthcare spending, we're spending $2.2 trillion on our health. That's significant money, right? On the bottom of the chart, you're going to see in green the CAM out of pocket. Now, CAM stands for Complementary and Alternative Medicine. Everything that we kind of talked about on the first couple of slides, if you remember. Now, about 84 million adults in one year, in 12 months, right, um, spent close to 34 billion, that's a B, dollars out of their own pocket on this medication. Not, not medication, but complementary and alternative medicine. So people are putting a significant amount of their own money towards this type of healthcare practice. And so that's why people are doing a lot more um, surveys on it, um, information, they're doing more research, they're, they're perking up their ears because they want to know what are people actually spending their money on because they're, there's, it's quite a lot of money out there. This is the out-of-pocket spending, and again, we're concentrating on the green parts because the green parts are, are complementary and alternative medicine. Close to $12 billion are spent on, and this is just in one year, spent on CAM practitioner visits. So those are your um, acupuncture visits or your chiropractor visits, the money that you're paying to the person in the complementary and alternative uh, medicine. On the right-hand side, we're going to see the non-vitamin, non-mineral, natural products. Those are over-the-counter stuff like Arnica gel, Tiger Balm that you're going to be right, rubbing on your, your joints and shoulders and your muscles for your muscle aches. And that was $14.8 billion. This is same kind of information, but just presented in a little way. We're spending a lot more uh, money on this non-vitamin, non-mineral, natural products. And some of those are, um, you can buy them from the practitioner themselves or over the counter, which they consider more self-care because you're self-diagnosing and say, hey, I need to grab that Arnica, I need to grab that Tiger Balm, I need to grab you know, Epsom salts, etc." But it's also interesting to see that we're spending a lot of money on the massage therapist, right? The yoga, the Tai Chi classes that are helping us feel better, the chiropractor, um, and the homeopathic medicine. In, on the left-hand side, we see that in 2002, 36% of adults surveyed had seen a complementary alternative practitioner in the 12 months prior to this survey being taken. That's, that's quite a lot, right? You're like 36%. By 2007, it had, had increased to 38.3%. And by that time, they finally decided, hey, let's also ask about kids. So that's when the third um, column, it says children in 2007. It's about 11.8%. So it's quite a lot of people in our population are seeing these practitioners. And the healthcare system in general has ignored them for quite a long time. So that's why they're kind of putting more, more um, information and research kind of into this. On this right-hand side, we're going to see by the age how the breakdown, I'm wondering, there we go, the breakdown of um, the age of people. So as we can see, 18 to 30, 30 to 39, 40 to 49. There's a little bump at 50 to 59, but these are qu this is quite significant. This is about 40, 41, 40% 40 of the, the population 
and our older generations, right? As we're getting these aches and pains, as we're kind of getting um, older, we're having more conditions, we're trying to figure out what can make us better, you know, this, this is not working for me so far, taking this pill um, is not working, there must be something else. And so we're seeing a, a greater percentage of the population. The most common um, therapies are definitely natural products by a lot, right? You're walking into your local CVS or your Walgreens and you're saying, hey, I saw I need to be taking Sol Palmetto because I'm having prostate problems or hey, my doctor said something to me about magnesium I think once and, and so I need to buy these things. So we're definitely seeing a huge amount of money, set about 18% um, of our money going towards these natural products. Mm -hmm. The second one is deep breathing, the, the third one is meditation, chiropractic, massage, etc. On that right hand side, they felt that there was um, a significant increase in these deep breathing, meditation, massage, and yoga between the years 2002 and 2007. And so they kind of just decided to, to talk about those. Um, the greatest ones definitely being meditation, increasing from 7.6% in 2002 to 9.4% in um, 2007. We also have um, children, right? We started talking or surveying them in 2007 and said, what are we using for our children? What are we seeking out for them? And there are multiple um, conditions. And definitely still we're seeing natural products, chiropractor, deep breathing, yoga, et cetera. These are the diseases and conditions that patients say that they are seeking out this complementary alternative medicine for. On the left-hand side in 2002, the most common is definitely back pain, right? Makes sense. It's affecting a lot of us. It causes pain. Pain is obviously something that affects our entire lives. We're not able to sleep. We're not able to enjoy our lives, go about our business. So it's very um, understandable that we are looking for anything and, and everything that could possibly help us and give us a little bit of relief. What's interesting is that as we surveyed them again in 2007, is not only is back pain still number one, but now we have neck pain, joint pain, and arthritis as two, three, and four. Whereas before, it was head and chest cold, and then neck pain and joint pain, et cetera. So we're definitely seeing a lot more of these patients with pain and arthritis and joint pain, um, maybe even hearing from their neighbors and friends that, hey, I'm getting great relief from this acupuncture, et cetera. And they're also searching out you know, different things for, for their pain relief. This is the diseases and conditions most frequently used among children, and again, back and neck pain, but then also head and chest cold, anxiety and stress. Anxiety and stress, and again, I think this warrants its own lecture, all of, uh, you know, in and of itself, we're seeing a huge increase in anxiety and stress, not only in adults, but our young children. Um, it is becoming, and I don't want to say the word epidemic, but it's becoming a, a significant issue. Um, and such to the point that we don't want to give them, right, these medications that our adults are used to taking, but we also don't want to leave them untreated. We want to know why are we getting their stress and anxiety? What are they having stress and anxiety about? And what can we do to help our young ones to feel better, right? Um, and so that's, that's definitely something we should continue to research on and, and look into. These charts are, again, breaking down into 2002 on the left side, 2007 on the right. Um, most common natural products, right? The most amount of money that we're spending out of pocket are going to natural products. What are we spending actually on? On this left-hand side, it's echinacea, ginseng, ginkgo biloba, garlic, etc. That actually goes hand in hand with um, your flu type, you know, symptoms, upper respiratory issues, immune boosters, etc. Um, which, if you remember the, the charts from a couple of slides ago, back in 2002, the second most common were your kind of head and chest colds, etc. So those natural <coughs> products actually go hand in hand. If we look on that right hand side for 2007, the most common now are fish oil, omega 3s, glucosamine, we have some echinacea still. And then now we're seeing chondroitin and other things that actually help flaxseed oil pills 
which will actually help with those joint back pains, arthritis, et cetera, that we've seen an increase in of the 2007 survey, right? In our children, we're still seeing a lot of echinacea, um, which helps with those head and chest colds, but also the fish oil, omega-3s, which is not only good for anti-inflammatory, so your joints and, and pains in general, but also we're seeing a great research coming out with um, depression, anxiety, ADHD, moon stabilizers, etc. So integrative medicine may be right for you. It might be out there, right? If you're if you're in this audience, there's a good ch there's a good chance that you're already interested in it. You want to know what it's about, and that you might be interested in in learning um, what I can provide for you. Now, I will say you don't have to seek me out as a primary care provider. If you already have someone that you love and you cherish and you see this person and you can never imagine ever going to someone else, that's totally fine. What's amazing about St. Elizabeth's Clinic is that you can see me as a consult and your primary care provider does not need to refer you to me, you can just ask to see me. Um, and so I can help or give you advice, dietary changes, etc and still work close with you, but also your primary care provider. So everyone's on the same playing field, everyone knows what's happening, and we can work together for your um, treatment of your overall, again, health, wellness, getting you to the best that we can get you. I talk about this a lot, this patient-centered care. In a perfect world, this is what I imagine the future of medicine would look like. Each patient is in the center, and around them are different connections and different spokes of the wheel, each of them supporting the patient on their wellness journey to optimal health. That can include the acupuncturist, the pharmacist, the physician, right? Um, the massage therapist, etc. In a perfect world, we would all know that we all existed and be in constant contact about what we're doing and the plan to get the patient to the, their optimal health. I think, and I'm a little biased, <laughs> that integrative medicine is the future of medicine. Um, it, it's kind of like taking a step back into what we were used to, right? Putting the patient first, putting the community around them and having their traditional healer or shaman um, right there only when you need them, right? I want you to take care of your own health and your wellness, and I'm here just to, just to help you along, hold your hand, maybe give you a couple of pieces of advice, but I'm not here to tell you how to be well. You already know how to do that. Hippocrates, who is some um, say is the, the one of the fathers of, of medicine, um, said to cure sometimes, treat often, but comfort always. Now a cure is, is sometimes seen as a pill. If you have high blood pressure, I can cure that with a blood pressure medicine. And I can definitely treat it and bring it back down. But I definitely want to be there and comfort you even if it's not something that I can actually cure or treat. If you have in stage cancer, sometimes there is nothing literally nothing I can do, but I can be there with you and I can hold your hand and I can help us be the best future of medicine and you being the, the um, give you the best hope, I guess, of, of feeling comfort and loved and supported. And so that's, I think, what a, a lot of medicine is, is being there and um, advising our people um, and our patients and our community as to, hey, what's best? Yes, you should definitely eat that salad. But if you feel like a hamburger sometimes, you're gonna feel like a hamburger sometimes, right? And it's really about that balance and having someone there to always support you and say, hey, you haven't had a hamburger in 30 days, I support you. But let's go back to that salad the next day, right? Um, does that kind of make sense? My upcoming lectures, we've definitely talked about 
This is really just broad about what integrative medicine is. It's a combining of, of right, this allopathic Western type of medicine with evidence-based alternative and complementary practices. Um, I work a lot um, with other practitioners in the community. Um, I reach out to them, talk one-on-one -on -one with, with Dr. Jessen, and say, hey, we, we have a patient in contact. She's the chiropractor here in town, and she says, this is what I'm working on. This is what I'm seeing. And I said, listen, I, I see and hear you, and this is what I'm working on as well. I'm recommending X, Y, and Z because I think it's going to help their joint pain. And she says, exactly. I'm helping them because I'm manipulating you know, their pelvis back into place so they're not having as much back pain. And we're going to do this together. We both are recommending physical therapy. We're both recommending walking outside, getting outside in nature, getting your 15, 20 minutes of sunlight when we can get it, um, et cetera. So upcoming lectures, we're going to talk a little bit about anti-inflammatory lifestyles, the next one. Anti-inflammatory lifestyle can benefit a lot of people. Um, and these include people with arthritis, right? Osteoarthritis, pain, chronic pain, um, back pain, any sorts of pain, um, diabetes, people with stroke, um, any sort of inflammation in our body, we can try and decrease, right? Decrease this, this inflammation, help take care of. Some people with um, gastrointestinal gut issues, right? If you have reflux, acid reflux, if you have trouble digesting food, if you have trouble with your bowels, this will definitely help. Um, some people with eczema, skin issues, can definitely help with decreasing inflammation, et cetera. So that's our next talk. We're gonna talk a little bit about what is the lifestyle incorporate? What does that anti-inflammatory diet look like? And how can I tweak my diet to look a little bit closer to that? Then we're gonna talk about managing chronic pain. Chronic pain is becoming a significant issue, right, in our community. Um, and I think there's a lot more options out there than just opioid medication. We're seeing that these opioid medications are actually not helping and they're sometimes hurting a lot of people. And so I'm going to talk about other options that are out there, other things that we might be able to take or add on. Um, a lot of this also will start with the anti-inflammatory style approach, right? Try and decrease that inflammation and pain and go from there. Um, I will then touch on in chronic pain, a little bit of what I do in chronic pain, um, which is manual manipulation, a little myofascial release, and dry needling. Ooh. <laughs> and then the third one will actually dive into what is dry needling, right? It sounds crazy, it's out there, I don't like needles, who is it good for, et cetera. How is this different than acupuncture? That's what that lecture is about. I'm gonna talk about, you know, what is it? Um, how can it help me? Is it actually gonna hurt? How long do I have to see you? Who else does it in the community? Can I also see my acupunctures, et cetera? So we're gonna really get into um, those questions and, and dry needling. As always, it is always open to everyone. We highly encourage registration because I'd love to see you here, and I'd love to know that you're coming, but if you can't register, that's just fine. I'd love to see you here more than see an email from you. Um, but the number and email are at the bottom of that, as well as there are sign-ups at the front. Lastly, I'm gonna ask that on your evaluation form tonight that you had in your seat, please write down any topic that you'd love to hear more about. I've listed only a handful of topics that I feel comfortable talking about at, at Free Range just tonight. I mean, if you ask me a question, you know, I hope you have time because I love to talk. <laughs> um, but we can talk anything about high blood pressure, diabetes, self-care, menopause, prostate issues, you know, trouble sleeping, insomnia, etc. If there's anything on this slide that you would love to hear more about or something that maybe you're dealing with and think that other people in the community would love to hear more about, write that on your evaluation form. We're going to take a look at them and try and provide as much information to the community about what you want to hear that we can. So we can answer all sorts of questions, give us all sorts of information, I can provide as much up-to-date research that, I, that we have available. That being said, thank you so much for coming out tonight. Um, I'm available for all sorts of questions. So, what questions are there? <laughs> 